this is something I haven't done before. Uh, I wanted to try to give my thoughts on uh, the Nintendo Direct for E3 2021 that uh, just happened just today. They showed off a lot of cool stuff. I feel like I haven't had a whole lot to say when it comes to Nintendo Directs in the past, but this one I feel like was, was easily their best in like a, a couple years. So I wanted to wanted to have a little have a little recap, a little breakdown, a little discussion. You know, just to, to talk about some stuff that stimulated me during uh, during the direct. So uh, overall, you know, great direct, a lot of good stuff. Uh, it, it felt a little front loaded to me. Like, you know, all the best stuff was towards the beginning, and then there was a low in the middle. But that typically happens. You know, it's uh, it, it's you're not gonna fill all 40 minutes with stuff that everyone loves consistently. Uh, so let's just dive right into it. Uh, first thing they showed off was. The new Smash character, uh, Kazuya from Tekken. Uh, I'm sorry, yawn. <laughs> I, I I know that Tekken's like you know a, a big, popular fighting game franchise with a lot of legacy and history, and Bandai Namco is working on Smash Ultimate, which you know obviously they have <laughs> they have every right to put that character in. But I feel like it's just another like Terry Bogard situation where like all right, it's just like another fighting game character who always looks one way and has a bunch of esoteric combos. Uh, it's, you know, sort of like Ryu number four. And that's not, you know, I recognize that a lot of people like playing as like Ryu and Terry and Ken, but like, that's just not a playstyle that I find fun. So, you know, Kazi it was just, it just didn't excite me. And that trailer was, I mean, it was fine. <laughs> It was it was a good it was a good trailer, but uh, just sort of dove right into it. Didn't really have a, a whole lot of build up, uh, specifically because Kazuya just seems at a glance to be such a bland decision. Uh, but he has this cool like gargoyle thing that he does. I mean that's 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 cool. That's different, I guess. Uh, it seems to be similar to Joker's like Arsene activation, where like you charge up uh, or like Claude's limit break. Like it's it's kind of like a meter, I think. Uh, I don't. No, for sure, because they didn't spend too much time on it, which is good. You know, they, you don't want to fill all the time with Smash. I think they spent like 30 minutes on Smash in 2018, and people just did not like that. Uh, I didn't like it because Smash Ultimate. I feel like you know, I, I've sort of fallen out of Smash Ultimate. The Fighter Pass, the DLC characters, they didn't really excite me, and like a lot of the newcomers in Ultimate just didn't excite me as much as I thought they would. Um, and Fighter Pass 2 is just shaping up to be a pack of characters that appeal to everyone else and not me. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not bad, obviously, you know, people, people love these characters, they have a lot of legacy. Sephiroth, obviously a classic RPG character. Uh, Steve, huge. Minecraft is, is, has this massive following. Uh, it's like, I think the highest grossing game of all time question mark i i don't actually know uh, but it's probably it's probably that um so that's kazuya it's good definitely good that they didn't like spend too much time on kazuya because i i am not interested in kazuya at all and i just wanted them to move on um after kazuya they after smash they showed some little titles little headlines uh life is strange which i never played uh <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, which we already saw more than enough of during Square Enix's press conference, it looks it looks fun. You know, it looks it looks cool. I just, I mean, you know, with with how the Avengers game was received last year or two years ago, I don't. I feel like they would have to really really pull it, pull it together to you know really make a splash with Guardians of the Galaxy. It looks cool, uh, but that's really all I can say for it. Uh, Worms Rumble and Astria's ending, they're not, like, end two-point campus, I guess, the college game, the building your college game. I, I guess, you know, they're, like, sort of, like, filler games. Um, but, hey, uh, after the filler games, they really pulled a sneaky on you, and they announced this brand new Super Monkey Ball game. Whoa! They showed a new Monkey Ball game. The first one in, like, I think, like, eight years, seven years? The last one was, like, a like a bouncy Peggle clone, um, and it, and it, like no one played it, so they took it down. So we haven't had a good, we haven't had a Monkey Ball game in years, and we haven't had a good one 
in decades. So it it's promising that they're, you know, doing a sort of HD collection with all the levels from 1, 2, and Deluxe. They're bringing all those back. That's cool. Super, super exciting. The biggest problem, I feel, well, well the modern Monkey Ball games, they have many, many big problems, uh, you know, with Banana Blitz and the games that followed that particular style. Uh, the problems with those games was that, well, it was, the level of design was garbage. <laughs> I, I feel like that's not an exaggeration to say. There were guardrails everywhere, everything was too easy, it was uh, designed around this asinine jump mechanic, and it, it just, it didn't flow nearly as well with levels uh, of the classic you know, 1 and 2 and deluxe of those games, uh, which had really tight, really consistent level design. But it seems like, you know, they're bringing it back, they're bringing those levels back, and it seems like that problem is fixed, I guess. It's more of a band-aid solution because, like, after this game, they're still gonna have to make new levels, and they have to, you know, design them well. Uh, but hopefully, they'll see, you know, how these old levels are received, and design the new ones from that base. The second problem, I feel, was... Well, the other problems with the series were, like, this overly cutesy art style, and the, this generic, bubbly music that didn't you know, invoke the same feeling as the bouncy, sort of hip-hop-esque, not hip-hop, but like house techno uh, aesthetic of the older games. And the controls were another big problem. The controls, um, you know, they were always kind of slippery. They kept shaking out the control methods with like, oh, it's a Wiimote, oh, uh, you use the balance board and the touch screen, and it just, they sort of just like got lost, and they <laughs> made the controls super sloppy, and they never really fixed it. Um, and uh, they had a jump button uh, up until the most recent game, which is the remake of Banana Blitz. They had a jump button. Yuck, <laughs> right? Like, what is the point of all these levels if you have a jump button? Uh, the the jump button, the jump function is apparently returning, uh, which I don't like. I saw like a tiny little. There's a tiny little shot. You blink and you miss it. Of Gon Gon jumping over an obstacle in one of the classic stages, and it just. Uh, it just brought my heart down into my gut because if there's if you have the ability to jump, what is the point of bringing back all these levels? Like they showed in the, the in the Japanese trailer, they showed uh, Master Level Nine from the original game, and in that stage, there's like a bunch of tiny little bridges that you have to walk on, kind of like a tightrope, uh, in this very small defined space, and. The reason that level is hard is because you, you can't uh, jump over <laughs> these bridges. You have to go on all of them and walk along them like a tightrope. And that's like the ultimate test of your skill with balancing. But if you can jump in this game, you can just beat the level in two seconds by jumping from, you know, the starting platform to the end. And that would just defeat the entire purpose. Like, why, why even have old levels if you're going to keep the jump mechanic? But uh, it seems... I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that it's probably like a toggleable easy mode feature, like an accessibility thing. Like, if you're bad at the game, you can turn on jumping. And that's what I'm hoping for because I really, really do not want to always have the option to jump and trivialize all of the levels in the game because that would suck. That would, like, it would kind of defeat the purpose of porting all these old levels and billing it as this experience for classic Monkey Ball fans. It would, it would. Just throw the throw the whole thing in the gar throw the whole thing in the garbage, but but yeah they they're saying they're saying a lot a lot of promising things about the new Monkey Ball game that you get there's gonna be alternate costumes they're bringing back old locations giving them a facelift uh, bringing back old party games which thumbs up for that I love the old party games uh, there's some screenshots that I'll put on the screen uh, right now just to show what the game looks like it's kind of like a, something of a mix between. Uh, the older classic designs that everyone loves and the modern cutesy designs that uh, no one loves but you know it looks it looks cool it's gonna be online play which is which is uh you know how, yeah, yeah yay for that i i've i don't know I, i've never had good internet consistently uh but like online play is gonna be great uh, i i do think there was a missed opportunity to have some of the mini games at least some of the mini games have the eight player feature right because Smash and... No, just Smash. I thought Mario Kart did it too, but uh, just Smash. 
Smash made it, made it available for uh, this eight player function, and I wanted other games to start using that too. And Monkey Ball, in the older games, when you played a mini game, sometimes you would see more than four computer players. Like, they would be like, you know, a fifth or a sixth, or in case of Monkey Race, you would fight, not fight, you would race against like, you know, up to eight people. And I f thought, you know, I looked at that, I was like, wow, there's eight player function in Switch games now. Why don't they bring back Monkey Race or Monkey Fight or whatever and allow eight players to compete? Because that would be, that'd be awesome. You know, there's the functionality for it, right? I feel like it wouldn't be that hard. Uh, but like, you know, it's whatever. I mean, four players, classic party games, that's all I really need. Great, great stuff, very promising. I'm cautiously optimistic about the jump thing because if, if I, if I can't turn off the jump, I, I will, uh, I will play the entire game with a frown. So, you know, I, I'm cautiously optimistic, looking for, uh, good things. It's releasing in October, which is soon, right? That's, that's exciting. But yeah, that's, that's, that's Monkey Ball. Super excited for that. So Mario Party Superstars was the next thing they showed off, which, wow. I was, anyone who, anyone who knows me, uh, knows how disappointed I was with Super Mario Party just because of like how like how everyone has been you know begging for Nintendo to release like a classic Mario Party without a car or mandatory motion controls or like everyone on uh, a board where you have to collect toads or something whatever Star Rush did and like the people just want a classic Mario Party experience and they kind of gave it to us in the form of Super Mario Party, but Super Mario Party had, like, a lot of problems, and it was very, very limited in its its ability to deliver on what Mario Party fans wanted, and I think the two biggest problems with Super were the scale of the game. I, I think that's, I don't think I need to explain that too much, like, um, Stars cost $10 instead of the normal 20. The boards were super tiny. The dice blocks only went up to six. Everything felt uh, very condensed and small. And it was it was almost claustrophobic to play the game because I was like, all right, let me breathe a little bit. Let me, you know, let me move 10 spaces every once in a while. Let me, let me spend more coins and get more coins. The numbers in Mario Party didn't need to change. <laughs> I, it, was, it was so strange to me that they like went out of their way to change that. So it felt like it felt like a little, you know, a little tiny Mario Party game for ants, and that's not that's not what I wanted. It's not really what anyone wanted. And they like kept the game dead for a while, and then they delivered this update uh, this year, like right before uh, E3, I think it was a couple months ago, maybe. But they delivered this update to, to Super after everyone had stopped playing it and stopped giving it giving a damn about it. So it was it was just too little, too late, and Super was already gone. So this new game, Mario Party Superstars, is looking very promising you know that all the you know the normal dice blocks are back max is 10 uh stars cost 20 dollars stars cost 20 coins again uh so the numbers seem to be back on track and they have some cool boards uh they're from the old games the, the 64 games and they have uh 100 mini games from the older games which is like all across the series so it's not just the n64 mini games which uh were like tearing people's hands up so you know they're good in terms of like the content, I think. But one problem that I still have is that like the game lacks flavor from what I'm seeing. Like Mario, Mario games recently have felt I felt like a lack of flavor in them. I know that's that's a word that like not many people use when discussing like Mario games, but like you know how in, in old Mario spin-off in old Mario spin-offs, they would do a lot of fun stuff. They would, you know, twist the Mario formula a little bit. They would put everyone in a little cowboy outfit, or they would change the look of things and have like all these fancy uh, user interfaces with funny looking letters and these very, very cool, very out there, vivid designs. And when you look at the new Mario Party games, specifically Super and this new one, it's, it's all like, Someone described it to me as like a corporate PowerPoint, and that's it's very accurate. Like it looks like something you would put together for to like to tell your boss about the stocks for this quarter. Like it, it's it's just it's so bland and flavorless. I'm sure the the game is going to be great, the content is going to be a lot of fun, but I do not like looking at it just because of how of how little of how little personality it seems to have of its own. I also saw on the on the treehouse 
they showed on the Treehouse Live thing that like items are are kind of back, but they're not you know they're not like the old items where like oh you would get a you get you would get a mushroom and that would give you a second dice block or like uh, you get like a piranha plant and you can plant it on this uh, board space and that was another like flavor thing that they would add just so it would be you know fun to look at it gave it this fun Mario twist but now it's just like oh you get two dice or you get like a stamp. Thing. Like I get it, the stamps are kind of part of the Mario series now, but like I don't know, I would I would have preferred for them to keep elements uh, of the Mario series as part of the you know flavor of the board game. I feel like it just sort of seems like it's half there. I know <laughs> this still like does not reflect my full feelings about the game. You know, I still am very excited for the new Mario Party game. It looks so much better than the old ones, <laughs> and not the old ones, uh, like nine and ten and Super and. Star Rush, whatever the hell that was, and I'm so glad that they're like they brought back the concept of taking 100 uh, of the best mini games and putting them in uh, a game on Switch because they did that for Top 100 on a dying system with like no online play, and it was a failure. <laughs> like it was it was so dumb of them to put Top 100 on 3DS and not Switch, but now it seems like they're they're doing something similar and. It's gonna be great because you can actually play the full game, and you don't have to just do mini game compilations. So that'll be fun. Um, after that, they showed off some other stuff. You know, Just Dance, that new Dragon Ball Z game. It looks, it looks. Is it new? I don't. I, I think it. I think it came out like last year, and it's just like a port of like the new that game and like some DLC. But it looks cool. Uh, I was never into like the Dragon Ball Z games. I feel like. They, they were all just like fighting games. Kakarot looks fun. I, I would have to know like what exactly it is. It just looks like you're you're flying around and then fighting dudes, which doesn't seem like that fun. <laughs> but uh, if there's like other stuff, if there's other stuff, uh, then then yeah, I'll 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 definitely give it a, a, another look. They showed Mario Golf Super Rush. Uh, super exciting. Which is what I would say if it was super exciting. <laughs> I mean, it's it's Mario Golf like. <laughs> It's, it's the one Mario sports game that is that like already had the least Mario flavor to begin with. You know, how the, the tennis was all like, oh, that's tennis, uh, but with a Mario twist. And uh, the baseball and the strikers like, ooh, this is baseball and soccer with a Mario twist. And Mario Golf was always like just golf. And it was, and I'm glad they're like bringing in new things uh, to like give it a give it a fun shake up, you know, with the Mario enemies and the um, the battle mode and that one shot of like New Donk City as a course. That's that looks fun. That looks cool. Going back to what I said about flavor uh, earlier, it does feel a little weird that everyone in this game is wearing a specialized outfit and Yoshi is still naked. <laughs> it's like. Like why, like why give everyone, including Bowser, like give Bowser an outfit and leave Donkey Kong and Yoshi just like hanging out. That's that's like be consistent if you're gonna do that. I don't know, but you know it looks it looks fun. I especially like the like RPG story mode with like the Mies. That looks really cool, and I can't wait to try that. You can try you can use like different wacky clubs. That looks that looks really cool. But yeah, not much else to say about uh, Mario Golf. You know, the, the, the golf game. <laughs> the golf game. You know, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be golf. So we're we're safe on, we're safe on the golf mode. They showed a trailer for Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin, whatever that is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know everyone's like, ooh, Monster Hunter. God, I love Monster Hunter so much. Uh, and Monster Hunter is probably cool, but I don't care about it. Um, so... Oh, um, Mario Golf is coming out like very, very soon, like this month, I think. So that's gonna be that's gonna be cool. So after Monster Hunter, they showed uh, a new WarioWare game, uh, WarioWare Get It Together, and that looks. I never played uh, the old Mario. The old Mario. I never played the uh, WarioWare games growing up, so this will be my first, I think. It'll it'll it looks like a lot of fun, a lot of wacky zany wacky little little micro games it looks like it has co-op which uh would be cool i don't know if the other warrior games had multiplayer but i assume with like a new thing uh it looks fun you know it looks uh like it's got you know a bunch of zany wacky mini games uh i can't really speak to too much about warrior just because 
I don't, I'm not as familiar with the series, so I don't have as, as strong feelings about it. Uh, then they showed a really long trailer for Shin Megami Tensei 5, which is a game that I don't care about, so I'm not talking about it. <laughs> Another trailer for Danganronpa, which is a game that I have to force myself not to care about, because I, <laughs> I played it like, I, I played it like once, and, uh, yeah, I just did not, I just cannot get behind Danganronpa. It's just so, like, corny. They showed a new Fatal Frame. Wait, <laughs> no they didn't. They showed, uh, like a port of the Wii U Fatal Frame. Which, like, did anyone buy that? Like, was it, was it, did it make enough money to justify a port? I don't, I don't actually know if, like, anyone bought Fatal Frame. But that's, you know, I can't, I, like, no thank you. <laughs> um, they showed the ex expansion for Doom Eternal. Uh, I didn't play Doom Eternal. I probably will soon. Because this looks, like, really awesome. Um, but I can't really speak much. Then they showed off, um, Mario and Rabbids Spark of Hope, which... Like, okay, I know that everyone who played the first Mario and Rabbids game loved it, and it was like this awesome tactical RPG game, and, you know, I accept that the game is good, but I cannot get behind this, like, Mario and Rabbids crossover, especially, like, with how good the game looks. Like, some of these, like, trailer cinematics look so good, like, they, they rival the Smash cinematics in terms of their quality and expressive nature and i'm just wondering like why do all this for a crossover with the rabbits like why like it, it almost seems like a waste to to use all of this for a crossover like this and like like i like i know that this game is going to be good and i will probably end up buying it or playing it at some point but i just i cannot fully get behind these like vapid surface level crossovers like uh, Mario used to do, like they, they used to do with um, Sonic, like with, like with the Olympics. Like I can't, I can't really attach myself to a game that's like that's like this, you know? It's oh, it's it's Mario, and like that's cool. I love all this, all the the Mario elements, the space stuff. Mario with guns is not something I would ever look at and say that's awesome, but it is. Just like seeing that, it's like it's it's undoubtedly cool, but. I cannot look at the rabbits in the same picture and honestly say that is a product I want in my home. So, you know, that's, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I just, you know, if you, if you liked the original rabbits game, um, please don't talk to me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, um, Advance Wars is coming back. That's a fun thing. I never played Advance Wars, but people were really excited about it. So I'm happy for them. And it's got like some new art, which is cool. The art style looks very clean, very... I, I love the anime style of the game. It's very bright and colorful. Uh, and then they then they did their like little one more thing, and that one more thing was apparently uh, Age of Calamity DLC, which like everyone who was watching at that time collectively sighed. Like, I let out a... Ugh, because I bought Age of Calamity, and it was just so, like... I, I can't believe I didn't learn my lesson from the first Hyper Warriors because it was so repetitive and so like like shallow of a game. I just I thought that like getting Age of Calamity it would be this like unique story experience, but I couldn't push myself through the repetitive, te tedious gameplay of Hyrule Warriors to get to that fun story stuff. And I and I didn't even look at I didn't even look at the the actual content of the Age of Calamity trailer uh, for even a second just because I was so disappointed that this was supposedly how they were ending it. But then they didn't end it. They they didn't end it. They brought out Eiji Onuma and he was like, hey guys, uh, just kidding, I have other stuff. And they showed a cool little, uh, little game and watch with Legend of Zelda on it. That was really cool. I like that. I don't think I'll get it, but it looks fun. It looks like a little, a little fun little thing. Then, they showed stuff for Breath of the Wild 2, and wow, like, it, it's ju uh, just wow. <laughs> I think it looks amazing, especially with, like, the, the floating island stuff, and Link having this mechanical guardian arm. That looks really cool. But yeah, they showed, they showed some cool stuff with the arm and with uh, this warped Hyrule. You can phase through stuff, and that's a cool new ability. And you can go in the sky, you know, Legend of Zelda Skyward Man. <laughs> you know, he's fallen 
through the sky and like there's these floating islands kind of like uh you know skyloft and skyward sword i guess, i assume you can like visit these islands and um do island in the sky things <laughs> uh, but you know it's supposed to come out 2022 thumbs up for that you know i'm excited i'm excited for for that definitely and then the direct was over so they didn't have like a they didn't have like a one more one more thing uh which is sometimes what i what i expect from these because you can never really know what to expect but you know overall it was like it was a really good direct like uh most of the e3 presentations that nintendo has done recently they've all gotten like a thumbs down or a meh from me you know just because either they didn't show anything we didn't already know about or they spent so much time on these rpgs that no one knew about or cared about like i think uh last year or like not last year there was one uh e3 where they spent like like a good 15 20 minutes talking about fire emblem and that's not i i recognize fire emblem has a lot of fans but you know when when you're spending that much time on one game even if it's like a, a game everyone loves like smash they did like half an hour of smash in 20 in 2018 and like no one wants to listen to half an hour of a game that not everyone's gonna love like i don't know i feel like this presentation they they budgeted their time very very well and they focused on you know delivering a snappy presentation only showing what they needed to oh my god i completely skipped over metroid dread they they, they came out and they were like yo guys uh we don't have to, we don't have anything to say about the new metroid prime 4 but here's like an entirely new game that we haven't talked about ever uh and they showed off metroid 5 which was the title until it wasn't the title. And they said, it's Metroid Dread, which is a game that like had only existed in uh, rumors and legends for for years. But now it's like finally here and it looks really, really cool. It looks it looks dark and mysterious. Samus is trapped in like this abandoned facility with portal turrets and like, you know, moving, moving stealthy security robots. And it looks super duper fun, especially since we didn't know about uh, this game at all, and like everyone was just looking for like, ooh, Metroid Prime 4, let's talk about Metroid Prime 4, where is that game? This just completely came out of left field. It looks like looks like a like a good time to be a Metroid fan, really, because, you know, it's a new game, they had Samus Returns, I don't remember when that was, but it was, it was relatively recent, so Metroid, I think, is making a comeback, uh, and where it's it's exciting thinking about that. So yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it, you know, they showed off a lot of cool stuff, the, the fillery, kind of uh, less exciting things were really kept to a minimum, and that, that was, you know, that was a, a really great move, just because the other E3s of old for Nintendo have really been a mixed bag and been all sorts of inconsistent with the time. So, definitely a really good, a really good show for Nintendo, and a clean sweep, because everyone else had a really <laughs> not great presentation. So, you know, it's, it's, a, wi it's a win for Nintendo. Uh, and a win for us, because a lot of great games are coming. A lot of great games in October. Uh, October is going to be a very loaded month with uh, the new Monkey Ball, new Mario Party, and Metroid Dread. Uh, and I think there was one more. I'm looking for it right now. Uh, whatever. Someone in the comments can collect all the, all the games that are coming out in October. But like that fall is going to be very loaded with Nintendo stuff, and that's gonna be great so that's all I've, I've really got to say um maybe i had more in my head that i couldn't dig up but like you know that's 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 e3 <laughs> that's that's life um i don't know maybe i should do more of these definitely definitely a new thing for for me to do uh, i'm not super used to talking into the microphone for like long stretches of time but i did want to break my my five month hiatus before it turned into a, another like year hiatus i'll be back with more stuff uh, some stuff is coming back, some stuff is uh, coming new, so that'll be that'll be exciting uh, to look forward to. In the meantime, uh, you should subscribe to me. I think that's a really good idea and you should do that. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, perhaps like it, share it, leave a comment, whatever else you do with videos that you like, and I'll, uh, I'll see you later.